proud. So sort of sky where you think the situation where you think your employer wasn't engaging in discriminating practices, but a jury clearly thought they did. So you don't think that maybe there's an issue there or your bias where your clients are lying to you? Well, from an objective standpoint, my ethical obligation is to represent the best interest of my clients. All right, thank you. Thank you. Additional questions of this witness? Thank you. I got to tell you, I'm I'm uh, I'm ambivalent about asking some of these questions, and so to the extent that I'm picking on you as opposed to other folks, please bear with me. I don't take don't take it personally. Don't take it. But what you said, or at least what your early testimony was, you never had direct evidence of discrimination, and I assume that what you meant to say was that you never had direct evidence of discrimination being the motivating factor for a termination. I believe what I said is that I have rarely had direct evidence of discrimination okay okay i believe that that's what i said okay then fair enough you know i'm i'm not a court reporter i can i can go pretty fast but not not all that fast and so here's where my issue is and and i'm gonna these are rhetorical questions i know you're going to answer no to all of them have you ever been told that your breasts look particularly good today no i have have you ever been spanked by your boss does my father count no <laughs> no have you ever had your boss explain to you how his or her sexual exploits went last night? Negative. Have you ever been told by your boss how you were thought of during those specific exploits? No. Okay. I have had all of those things happen to me, and that's literally just the tip of the iceberg. And I had those happen to me at a time when I was also a single parent when I probably did have some issues with tardiness and absenteeism as a single parent. I was fantastic at my job. There's no question about that. I was never fired for it. But when you are in that situation, and, I'm, and I say this because it's personal to me, when you're in that situation and you are literally just trying to put food on the table for your child, you don't necessarily go and talk about it to other folks because you're embarrassed. And you also don't bring a lawsuit and fight about it because you need the job. The concern is, is that in, during any of that time, and you know, I'm working for a firm where the, all of those activities are occurring from someone that is a member of the management team. Do you think that I could have gone to the, another member of the management team and been taken seriously? I don't think so, honestly. But that's what my concern is, is that my concern is that what happens is that the voice of women that are still to this day being treated the way that I was as a young woman are being diluted by well, you're late all the time. And guess what? You know what? Joe was late. Billy was late. Everybody else was late. Joe and Billy and these other folks also had absentee issues, but they might not have been fired for being told how their breasts look particularly well in a certain outfit. And I don't see how, I don't see how this bill, and this is where my question comes in, you tell me how that bill protects my voice or the voices of others similarly situated. And I'm sorry that those things happen to you, ma'am. It happens to every woman. That's the thing. Ask 10 women, and I'm going to tell you, nine of them are going to say at some point they have. Representative, is this an inquiry or a story? I, I'm asking the question. He's please, please do. Sure. So, I mean, from my perspective, whenever an employer calls me and asks me a question and they say, this happened and this happened, I mean, I'm weighing facts as they are presented to me to say, do we have employment discrimination here not because that's usually the question you know what do we do in this situation what is the proper course of action I mean whenever I have employee employer clients I typically hope that there is a non-discrimination non-harassment policy that's followed in practice not just a book on the wall and that there is maybe an anonymous hotline or a reporting system so that you so that the employee that feels as though they are being discriminated against or treated poorly that they have a means by which to report that to someone who does have the power and authority to investigate and, and do it correctly. Yeah, but how does this bill protect those voices? And so the way that the bill protects them is there is a legal standard here where if we want to talk about but for causation or we want to talk about motivating factor, I mean, that is an objective standard that the federal courts have had for 30 plus years that backs up, whether it's in motion for summary judgment or it's in front of a trial by jury, that folks can look at that and say, was that person's gender a motivating factor in being disciplined for being tardy or being disciplined for being absent 
or for them complaining about inappropriate and unwanted sexual comments directed toward that employee. Um, it is a, that is the benefit about this is it is an objective standard um, as opposed to having multiple competing standards um, at play. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are there other questions? 